Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop on this fine spring morning. Let me tell you, between 3 and 4 in the morning is the best time of the day. Uh, this morning I thought maybe I should just give a little background on the Giant Trevelli project and my way of thinking. Uh, the main thing is, you're only growing when you're learning. Now this is something that I've never tried before. Um, not as a whole, but a lot of it I have done in some other way. And that's basically the discussion I want to have this morning is how to go about planning a project that you've got absolutely no idea what you're doing. So I've been, this has been going around in my head for a fairly long time and that's the first point. Get it in your head and think about it and think about it long. Just Don't just go out and say, okay, right, I'm going to do this now, boom, because you're going to mess it up more than you should. You will eventually mess it up. Uh, you just limit the amount of heavy work that you have to do. So get it in your head, plan it, uh, let it sit there. Inadvertently, if you want to do something, your mind will travel back to it, either when you're out on the road or <clears throat> doing something else or whatever the case may be. So get it in your head, see how it's going to fit together, what can you use, etc., etc. And, and you'll be going back and forth a lot. So the first part in our planning process, and basically... I do this on all my projects, on everything that I do, is I let it go through my head a bit. Now sometimes you've got time to do it and sometimes you don't. Um, but let it go, let it sit in your head and, and, and after, after you've got it in your head, then you start putting it on paper. Now putting it on paper, uh, there's a lot of iteration in this process. Um, you'll be scratching on the back of cigarette boxes and nap cocktail napkins etc and you and you, and you go back to it <coughs> and you're going to change a lot of things along the way even if you think you've got it all planned out there'll be something that 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 doesn't work out when you're actually doing it um, and you've got to be ready for that now the main thing when you've got a big project like this giant Trevelli build that i'm doing uh, how do you go about it? Because people seem to run into a wall when it comes to something that they're not familiar with. That's a, a fairly big project, uh, and they don't even they get to a point where they get so uh, caught up in it that they don't even start. So the first thing you do is, is breaking it down. Now breaking it down is the best way of getting something done now you've got it when you're breaking it down break it down uh, or a wise man once said uh, when you're trying something new bite off enough so you can spit it out if you want to um, so break it off into edible chunks uh, it just makes things easier at the end of the day and how can I put this? Once you break it down into smaller steps, each little step becomes easier to complete. Um, for instance, on this giant Trevelli build, I've, I've broken it down and, and, and the episodes are basically going to follow my uh, progress in terms of how I broke it down, in terms of the body, the fins, the head etc etc so so break it down into into pieces that you can manage now from there on you need to do some research especially if you don't know what you do um look there's no such thing as a uh, trade secret anymore uh on the internet you'll find something that that will work for you maybe not exactly that's the other thing when you go and do research don't go and do research for exactly what you want uh, sometimes you'll get it sometimes you won't there's no, there's no new stuff on the market. There's no uh, new ideas in terms of, of, of what we do in the home shop. Um, unless you're working for SpaceX or one of those guys. you Someone's done it before, I can promise you. Or something similar. So go and check, for instance, on... I want to do the body in foam. Go and check how guys work with foam. You've got guys on, on the YouTube building props out of foam, etc. And, and you pick up... Uh, little things that, that'll help you in the end. So so once you've done your research, uh, 
um, you can replan and revisit what you've put on paper. Somewhere you're going to see something that's but that's going to work better, easier, faster. Uh, and also, you've got to rely on your previous experience. Uh, like I said, I've I've done a lot of the things that I'm going to do on the build. I've done in some other way before, so I'm just going to adapt it to work on this project. <clears throat> now, and then it comes down to the next point that I want to talk about, which is do-overs. Partner, you are going to make a hash of something somewhere along the way. Make sure that the chunks that you've bitten off are small enough so that if you need to redo something, there is place and space to do it. Uh, don't be afraid of it. It's going to happen. Make peace with it and carry on. Um, an easy way to, to sort of minimize do-overs and this is not going to necessarily save you time. In, in, in essence, it's going to use up more time. Is, is doing test pieces. If you've got uh, something that you're trying out, especially for the first time, uh, take a test piece, see if it works. Not, d don't try something the first time on your project. Uh, you always see on the YouTube guys taking scrap wood, trying something before they actually put it on, on their project. That's if they haven't done it before and are not comfortable and familiar with what's happening. So make sure you've got test pieces, spend the time. In the long run, it'll save you and and a, a lot of heartache and just makes your end product so much better. Then once once you've got that in, that, that sorted out, th this will happen. I promise you now, you will hash up somewhere along the way and you just have to live with it. Uh, then it comes down to tools. Now, you always see these guys on YouTube with all these marvelous tools. Myself, I don't have all the fancy tools. I've got basic stuff. Well, I won't say basic stuff, but a bit better than basic stuff. But I try and get the right tools for the job. Now, that's not always the, um, the way of going about it. We don't all have open checkbooks and all of that. So, so when you do your planning, and, and that's why I say you'll see, I, I, I always refer back to my planning phase. When, when you get to, to a certain portion of the work, check the tools that's, that, that, that you absolutely need. And then you go back into your shop and you see what's available. And once you've got available, then you, you, what, you know what's in your shop, then you know what your shortfall is. Uh, and then you can start planning for that. For instance, I, I, I didn't have an airbrush, I never thought of having an airbrush. Uh, for this project I'm going to use it, so I got myself one, i um, practicing with it now, uh, so that once we get to the actual build, that I've got a better idea of what's going on. Uh, some tools you always use again. I don't count the cost of those tools because they just get absorbed into my shop. But some things you might not use very often afterwards, and, and, and that's, that's something you've got to make right with yourself. Uh, once you've got the tool sorted out, now that'll also change if you maybe see that a portion of that you will be doing in, an, in, a, in a way not anticipated, it might change your list of tools. Same with, with your bill of materials. Draw up a bill of materials of what you need. Uh, see what you've got, see what's outstanding, and get that sorted out. Um, look, like I say, if, if, if you're in the home shop, you're not doing it for someone, you can't recover that cost from a client sort of scenario. Um, so you've got to make peace with, with what you need, what, what's available, and what you, what, what you can get. Um, <coughs> and start planning around that. That, that. that makes the whole process just so much smoother and more flowing uh, because you know maybe I'm gonna sit on this for a month waiting for something through, uh, that's got to be ordered uh, through the mail or whatever the cost might, case might, might be um, make uh, sort that out beforehand see what you're gonna need that you don't sit here halfway through uh, a certain portion of the job and, and you see, oh, I don't have a tool or I don't have the right materials or I'm shorting this. Um, 
that, that, the, that the stuff you need is available. Once you've got your bill of materials going, <coughs> the next thing, and, and, and it actually comes to bill of materials, tools, the whole planning thing, and the actual build, is your cost. Now, I can promise you now, um, if you want to build something that's available on the market, you will not build it cheaper. Those guys have ironed out all the uh, <coughs> all the issues that it, you you cannot buy something or build something cheaper than you're gonna than you're gonna buy it if it's available. Um, this fish I could have gone to the taxidermist, could have built me one, cost me a fair amount of money, but at the end of the day, the one that I'm building myself is going to be more expensive. Uh, so make peace with that. Make sure that you've got the funds available and not skimping off must pays to have your little project run. Uh, it's like guys with an addiction. Don't, don't uh, use money that was meant for something else um, for your shop addiction, if I can call it that, because that's what I have. I've got a shop addiction. Uh, so the first thing is obviously then the materials, material cost, and then it comes down to time. Now your time cost, that's a, that's a difficult one. If you're doing it for someone else, obviously you want return on investment and your investment is the time you put it. That's why you won't be able to make it cheaper than you will be able to build it. Now myself in the home shop doing something for myself, I don't count my time. My time is worth zero in that sense. I do not put it in the equation, it's just one of those things that it's my time, it keeps me sane. Uh, as long as you as as long as you're not skimping on family, that's the most 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 important part. Don't take away family time to work on projects. Family is the most important thing that there is. And then also secondly, don't take time away from your job to do your projects. Projects aren't going to pay the bills. The job will. So, in essence, your your little projects will always take the back seat in, in terms of time and effort. Uh, but f most importantly, I, I, I know a lot of guys, and I was very guilty of this. I spent so much time in the shop that I that I completely missed my family. Uh, Love past them completely. So, check on that. Make sure that that you 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 put the time and effort where it should be, and then when you've got spare time in the shop, make it make it count. Uh, don't sit around wondering what what needs to happen, and that's why you've got you've got your job planned. I know this is a, a bit of a back and forth, and it seems like my head's all over the place, and mostly it is. But make sure that you've got all of that sorted out, and once you've got this whole thing planned out, like I've done now. I've taken the time, I've let it sit and, and simmer and went through all the possibles and what I want to do and how I want to do it. The chances of you finishing the project is very good. You won't stop halfway. And, and I think the outcome will definitely be better in terms of a final product if you've planned it correctly. And, and don't plan to fail. Well, what's that old saying? Failing to plan is planning to fail. So plan your job out. Make sure you've got everything in place and uh, just get into it. A lot of guys, they just look at stuff and, no, I won't be able to do this. I promise you, if you put your heart to it, you will be able to do it. Um, it's going to take time. It's going to be a learning curve. <coughs> Mostly you in the you suck zone. Um, but the only time that you are actually going to be happy is when you're learning. Uh, well, most, that, that's most, most certainly the case for myself. When I'm learning, I'm happy. And that rubs off on my family, it rubs off on my job, it just rubs off on everyone. Uh, so make sure that you do something um, that's, that's, I won't say just productive, but do something that you like, uh, try something new, and, and just become a better person through it. Think about it, get yourself a project, plan it, and, and just start. That's the main thing, just start on it. The moment you've started, you, you start thinking about it, and then, and then everything will become clearer as you go along. 
So, as always, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And as always, stay safe.